O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva, O all pervading personality Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primal cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the uh, only because of him uh, do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pojita Kaitravotra Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vidyam Vastavam Atravastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamani Krite Kimba Pare Ishwaraha Sadyohridi Avarudyate Tra Krite Bihi Sisu Subis Takshanan Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataror galitam palam sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam muhur ahoras kabu vibhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sugadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarine juice was already rel relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Pediantak Stohi Abhadrani we do not to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. 
Asta presu badesu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava kama luba dayas chaye chete tarana vidam stitvam satve prasiddhati by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vigyanam muktasanga sijayate when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Bidyate Hridaya Grantis Chidyante Savasam Saya Chashakar Chashasar No Chidyante Siyante Chashakar Mani Jusa Evat Manishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagam. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16, Verse Number 12. Badrasvam Ketumalam Cha Bharatam Chotaran Kurun Kim Purushadini Varsani Bajitya Jagre Balim Yehebanim Translation Maharaj Prikshit then conquered all parts of the earthly planet Bajraswa Ketumala Bharata, the northern Kuru, Kimpurusha, etc., and exacted tributes from their respective rulers. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Badraswa. It is a tract of land near Meru Parvata, and it extends from Gandamadana Parvata to the saltwater ocean. There's a description of this varsa in the Mahabharata, Bhisma Parva, 7.14 to 18. The descri description was narrated by Sanjaya to Dhritarashtra. <clears throat> don't ask me where it is, I'm not sure. So, <laughs> uh, I have an idea, but I don't want to guess. So. Maharaj Yudhisthira also conquered this varsa, and thus the province was included within the jurisdiction of his empire. Maharaj Brikshit was formally declared to be the emperor of all lands ruled by his grandfather, but still he had to establish his supremacy while he was out of his capital to exact tribute from such states. Ketumala, the earth planet is divided into seven dvipas by seven oceans, and the central dvipa called Jambu dvipa is divided into nine varsas or parts by eight huge mountains. Bharata Varsa is one of the above mentioned nine varsas, and Ketumala is also described as one of the above varsas. It is said that in Ketumala Varsa, women are the most beautiful. This varsa is conquered, was conquered by Arjuna also. A description of this part of the world is available in the Mahabharata Sabha 28.6. So Prabhupada said in France that 
the women in uh, uh, well uh, northern India, but which would be today Pakistan and Kashmir, but mainly referring to Kashmir, are the most beautiful women in the world uh, as far as their bodies go. But that the women in Europe have the most beautiful faces. So I don't know. That's what he said. In, uh, uh, huh? Yeah. And, and, and he said, he said and, and Krishna has come to, as Parish uh, Ishwara, to enjoy uh, beautiful French women. <laughs> Were you on that walk? walk? No. Pardon? Were you on that morning walk? No. No, no. Like yeah, it's a long. It happened a very long time ago in Paris. I was on the walk. Uh, so this, that's Kate Tomala. It is said that this part of the world is situated on the western side of the Meru Parvata, and inhabitants of this province used to live up to ten thousand years. Bhisma Parva six point thirty one. Human beings living in this part of the globe are of golden color and the women resemble the angels of heaven. The inha inhabitants are free from all kinds of diseases and grief. Bharata Varsa. This part of the world is also one of the nine Varsas of Jambudvipa. A description of Bharata Varsa is given in the Mahabharata, Bhisma Parva, chapter 9 and 10. In the center of Jambudvipa is the Ilavrita Varsa. The south of Ilavrita Varsa is Hari Varsa. The description of these Varsas is given in the Mahabharata, Sabha Parva 28.7 to 8, as follows. Nagarams cha vanams cha eva nadish cha vima lodaka, and so forth. It is mentioned here that the women in both these Varsas are beautiful, and some of them are equal to the Apsaras, or heavenly women. Uttara Kuru. According to Vedic geography, the northernmost portion of Jambudvipa is called Uttara Kuru Varsa. It is surrounded by the saltwater ocean from three sides and divided by Shingavan Mountain from the Hiranmaya Varsa. Kimpurusha Varsa. It is stated to be situated north of the great Himalaya Mountains, mountain, which is 80,000 miles in length and height, and which covers 16,000 miles in width. These parts of the world were also conquered by Arjuna, Sabha 28.1 to 2. The Kimpurushas are descendants of, of a daughter of Daksha. When Maharaj Yudhisthira performed the horse sacrifice yagna, the, in, the inhabitants of these countries were also present to take part in the festival, and they paid tributes to the emperor. This part of the world is called Kimpurusha Varsa, or sometimes the Himalayan provinces, Himavati. It is said that Sukadeva Goswami was born in these Himalayan provinces and that he came to Bharata Varsa after crossing the Himalayan countries. In other words, Maharaj Brikshit conquered all the world, he conquered all the continents adjoining all the seas and oceans in all directions namely eastern, western, northern, and southern parts of the world. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So this requires um, research, uh, because Prabhupada is giving the uh, parts of the Mahabharata when these different areas are uh, explained. So you have Bharadvasa, Bhadrasva, is one. And then you have Ketumala is two, Bharatvarsa is three, Chambudvipa or Il Ilavrita Varsa is four, Uttarakuru five, Kimpurusha Varsa six, and hmm. What? Which one? That's all. Himavati? Which way? Which, which, where did you see that? Did you see that? What? Huh? 
Ok. Hiran Maya Varsa. Okay. Anyway, uh, these are the different areas of the Earth planet, but when it gets into this point about uh, Kimpurusha Varsa, it's stated to be situated north of the Great Himalaya Mountain, which is 80,000 miles in length and height, and which covers 16,000 miles in width. So this is something that's not known in Earth's geography. But it is definitely a fact that the, there's an extension of the Earth that we don't know about. So the Prabhupada has said that the Earth has not really been, uh, let's say, completely ex excavated, not excavated, but uh, examined. There are parts of it that are unknown still. And, uh, and when uh, Arjuna was uh, banished for one year uh, because he uh, inappropriately uh, uh, barged his way into the uh, place where Yudhisthira was uh, supposed to be alone with uh, uh, Deva Kif, uh, uh, with uh, uh, his wife for one year. Uh, at that time, he was banished, and Arjuna went to the heavenly planets by going up into the Himalayas, and then there's supposed to be a, a passage from there to the heavenly planets, or Indra Loka. So there is a part of the, the earth that we don't know about. Uh, it may be a subtle part. And, uh, and there's some indication here when it says that there's a, uh, there's a uh, it says that it is stated to be situated north of the great Himalaya, Himalaya mountain, which is 80,000 miles in length and height, and which covers 16,000 miles in width. So that's something that's not known and has not been discovered yet. So, very interesting things are in the Srimad Bhagavatam. If you want to become a famous person, uh, then uh, you'd have to study the Bhagavatam very carefully. And there's many things that are yet to be discovered. Uh, this is one of them. Another one is that the, actually the moon is farther away than the sun and, and 20 times bigger than the sun. So, uh, that's something else that's still not known. Just like in, uh, in history, Copernicus and uh, some other uh, ast astronomers discovered that the uh, Earth, is, that the uh, the solar system in our solar system, it's not uh, uh, Earth centered, but it's heliocentered, it's centered around the, the Sun. But for a long time, uh, at least over a thousand years or more, it was believed that the sun was circling the earth, say. And then, and the Catholic Church was, was uh, you know, adamant about it. And then these, these uh, astronomers, Copernicus, Kepler, and others proved, or I guess they, they established that the, the earth is revolving around the sun. And at first the Catholic Church refused to accept it, but then eventually they accepted it. And that began what was called the, uh, uh, enlightenment period eventually. Uh, by the time we get to the 16th century, uh, scientific uh, research started to evolve. It began with this idea of that the Earth is not uh, the center of the universe. Uh, and, and then uh, it developed more and more, and eventually the Catholic Church was obliged to accept all these things, whereas before they 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 had the you know different type of belief about the structure of the universe, so that so-called scientific uh, explosion gradually diminished the uh, authority of the Catholic Church over a, a period of around two to three centuries, sixteenth, seventeenth, eighteenth century, 
And uh, uh, what's interesting, though, however, was Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton was, in my estimation now from studying this, uh, I'll, 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 I'm going to write a, uh, an essay on it. Uh, he was the ideal scientist, the type of scientist that Prabhupada would have very much appreciated because not only he studied science, and he was a great mathematician and a scientist, but he also studied the Bible very carefully. He was actually an ordained minister, uh, or he was, you know, uh, he was like a, a, pre, uh, a priest, not a Catholic priest. He was against the Catholic Church, but an Anglican priest. However, uh, all the studies that he made of the Bible were not published when he died. Only his scientific uh, studies were published. And knowledge of all his uh, biblical studies didn't come out till the 1960s, very recently. Uh, they came out in bits and pieces, but it's, it's from the 1960s on that, that the full body of his uh, ecclesiastical or, or spiritual studies came out. And if you compare Newton to Einstein, you'll see a major difference. Einstein was basically uh, a nobody compared to Newton as far as spiritual knowledge goes. And, but they, they might be considered equal as, as the two greatest scientists and mathematicians in modern times. But Newton was way above Einstein as far as understanding spiritual you know, reality. And uh, his uh, laws of mechanics established very clearly that, and he always said, there's, there's a supreme personal God, and he's all, he's omnipotent, and he's omnipresent. So he, he was talking Krishna conscious philosophy. And, and it's amazing when you read these things. And it's, and it's not very mo well known today either because after he died, because all his spiritual studies were not published, uh, he was misrepresented for three centuries by the scientists who all claimed that uh, he was one of them and uh, that he, uh, uh, through his scientific research and mathematics, he proved that the Catholic Church was nonsense and that uh, there's actually uh, no personal God and that uh, this, the universe is functioning on its own, right? But actually, the opposite is true. But it didn't become clear until the 1960s when all his spiritual studies came out that uh, he, he was actually a devotee. And he's, he'd be, he would be considered an ideal scientist because through science he proved that God is the supreme personality of Godhead. And he's controlling everything. And, but even though he's controlling everything, uh, there, there were certain parts of Krishna consciousness that he didn't, he didn't understand clearly. But he was not a determinist. A determinist is that you know people don't have any free will at all. He believed that people had free will. Uh, and whereas the and and also Einstein also re rejected determinism. He, he he said that's nonsense. But he didn't accept that there's a personal God. So anyway, all this is, uh, is something that I'm looking at now, and our kids are studying it too. To see the difference between Newton and Einstein is a major difference because Newton would be uh, with a few little adjustments an ideal Krishna conscious scientist who proved that God is a person, and he's the supreme personality of Godhead. He used a little bit different language, but it, uh, the, uh, he didn't have the, he didn't have the uh, let's say, the privilege of meeting uh, a pure devotee. And neither did Einstein. But, I, but Newton was much more advanced than Einstein as far as connecting science and religion. This is a big thing. Is there a connection between science and religion? There is. If you read Newton, you'll see. He connected it uh, almost perfectly. So 
there are many things that are still not known. Uh, and unless, and so just like Newton, he found out a lot of things by very carefully studying the Bible. But the Bible, of course, does not really compare to the Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, but it has uh, enough stuff in it that someone like Newton could was able to understand almost all the things about Krishna consciousness. There, of course, he didn't. It doesn't have. There's no information of what's going on in the spiritual world, but there is a lot of information in the Bible about God. Uh, so, not not as much as the Bhagavatam, but the, there is uh, enough indication that Newton got many things right. Okay, so I'll stop right there. Are there any questions? The last paragraph, in, in, in other words, Maharaj Parke conquered the whole world. He conquered okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Speak into the microphone. People complain all the time. They can't hear the questions. The people are listening on the internet. Speak carefully into the microphone. So, yeah. Anyone who has a question have to speak into this microphone. Yeah. Just hold the microphone. Just hold it. Take it out. Hare Krishna. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, in other words, in other words, Maharaj Parikit conquered all the world, he conquered all the continents, adjoining all the seas and oceans in all directions, namely the eastern, western, northern and southern part of the world. So now this world is referred to uh, Jambu, what's it called? Jambu Dweep or just Bharat Vasha? And again, is a Bharat Vasha include just India or the rest of the world? Well, here it says Bharat Vasha is one of the nine Varshas of the Jambu Dweepa. Okay. So the word world. The that world means what? The world means uh, Jambu or just uh, Bharat Varsha. And then if you Bharat Varsha on the earth, is the Bharat Varsha just India or they include the rest of the world? Well, if you look under Bharat Varsha on the previous page, it says this part of the world is also one of the nine varsas of the Jambu Dweepa. So that's that's what's being referred to as Bharat Varsa. The part of the world. It is it says exactly this part of the world is also one of the nine varsas of the Jambu Dweepa. A description of Bharat Varsa is given in the Mahabharata, Bhisma Parva, chapter nine and ten. The Prophet gives the uh, the uh, references that we can go to to find out more, we would have to go to the Mah Mahabharata. No, no, my question, my, my question is the, the name world. That, that world is uh, Jambu, well, Jambu Dweepa. Under K2 Mala, it says this earth planet is divided into seven Dweepas or seven oceans, and the central Dweepa, called Jambu Dweepa is divided into nine varsas or parts by eight huge mountain mountains. So okay. The world it refers to what? Huh? The world. It refers to what to Jambu or just to that part of the because the, the Earth planet is divided into seven dweepas. Right. By seven oceans. And the central dweepa, called Jambu dweepa, is divided into nine varsas, or parts, by eight huge mountains. Bharat Varsha is one of the above-mentioned nine varsas, and Ketamala is also described as one of the above varsas. 
So you have two things here. You have the earth is divided into seven dwipas. Uh, I, th I think the dwipa means an island. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, by seven oceans. And the central dwipa, one of those seven, is called Jambu dwipa. And it's divided into nine varshas, or parts, by eight huge mountains. Bharat Varsha is one of the above mentioned nine Varshas, and Ketumala is also described as one of the above Varshas. Within, within Jambu, Jambu Dweep? Yes. Okay. And Jambu Dweep is not referring to the whole earth. Yeah, yeah, right. This is a, yeah, the That's, that answers your question. No, no. When it, uh, now, when we use the word, the word world, this part of the world is a refer to. Jambu, Jambu Dweep, or, uh, or the other... No, Jambu Dweep is, is the central Dweep yes. of the Earth planet, mm -hmm. which is divided into seven Dweepas. Right. Okay. Like seven Dweep, like continents. Well, modern, modern. well, we said Dweep is referring to islands, right? Like continents. Well, continent is something else. Continent. Okay. Okay. Yeah, see, you have to be very careful. The continent is something used in English language, but Dweepa could be something different than that. Yeah. I don't find any different. No, I don't find contradiction because if yeah, we would have to consult an expert, an Vedic expert, to try and uh, explain it in language that we may understand or may not understand. But for the time being, you know, as soon as you make correspondences like continent and dwipa. Uh, all right, so you know, he's, he's saying something a little different now. <laughs> he's talking about a Mahadvipa. But it's not perfect. In Hindi? Okay. I would hold all judgment. Let's just research this question before we, I don't think we could answer it perfectly right now. Well, my understanding of is continent. But where the world as a seven initially it should be seven continents. You have uh, Australia, you have uh, Europe, you have uh, uh, America North America, South America, Africa. Those are our continents, but they in in the, in the Sanskrit uh, in, in this connection they they're supposed to be dreamers. You have to be very careful about this. You're already it's talking about uh, there's uh, in the Himalayas uh, there's something that's eighty thousand miles in length. The whole Earth is not even eighty thousand miles. I, I know, but I mean, there's some. I'm saying there's things that we don't know. Yeah, so, the, so in order to understand this more clearly, we would have to go to the Mahabharata and maybe even refer to some experts, because this is, this is all very, uh, let's say, subtle. There, there are things that I'm, I'm saying, Prabhupada also said they haven't explored the Earth properly yet, and they're trying to go to other planets. There are many parts of the Earth that are not discovered yet. But anyway, my initial question was, when we use the word world, yes, world that including when it's Jam Jambu Dweeper or just uh, Bharat Vasha or. But here it says that under Ketumala, it says this earth planet is divided into seven Dweepers by seven oceans, and the central Dweeper, 
called Jambudvipa is divided into nine varsas or parts. So Jambudvipa is a central dvipa of the of the seven dvipas. Another way, so, so, so it's so it might be referring to it, or you might use it to refer to the whole earth. I don't know, but if you just read what say what it says here, it's a part of. It's one of the dvipas. Okay. But Prabhupada himself is referring to the earth with the word earth. He's, he's not using, is he using another word somewhere for the whole earth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's nine varshas in Jamba Dvipa, and then there's seven Dvipas. Yeah. yeah. So, so that means the world means uh, uh, Jamba Dvipa and Ada Dvipa too. It's the old part of the world. Yeah, the Earth planet is divided into seven dvipas. So there's seven major parts of the Earth, but there's subparts also. Like in one dvipa, there's there's uh, nine varsas. So, oh, that's including the world then. They're all including included in the world. If you refer to the world as the Earth planet, as Prabhupada is referring here, I would I would refer to it like that and then mm -hmm. after that there's seven major parts and in each each one of those major parts there can be sub parts also okay now the, the the second question was about i mean i heard proper saying sometimes he refers to bharat Varsha, not just india but the whole the old plant the old world in plan he's referring to, um, well i'll just take I guess here is referring to the kingdom of Ramachandra and then later on of Yudhisthira that included the whole uh, the whole world, the whole earth. If you want to have more descriptions of the earth, you go to Ramayana also when when Lord Ramachandra asks Sugriva to find uh, Sita Devi. He goes through an explanation of all the places he's going to look, and that's a and it's a very detailed description of the known parts of the earth at that time. And 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 in fact, if you read it carefully, you see it's, it, it seems as if it's not only talking about the earth, but it's going outside of the earth also. Yeah, that, that's another thing because when you ask people or the scientists, whatever the geographists, they will, they describe this world. They, they know every part of this world. According to the that's not what Prabhupada thinks. <laughs> Prabhupada said they haven't re they haven't explored all the different parts of the earth. He says, and now they're going to other planets to explore. <laughs> so when you read something like this, which we just read, you can see that there's there definitely some areas of the earth that has never been explored yet. When it talks about eighty thousand miles of something, the the whole earth is not is, is it eighty thousand miles the earth? <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, where, where does this eighty thousand miles come from? Say, so there are some mysterious things that we don't okay, know. When, when you look at the globe, at the globe feature, you see every part of the Earth in there. <laughs> look, <laughs> there have been maps of the Earth in history, right? So the map of the Earth today does not look like the map that they had, you know, a thousand years ago. And probably a thousand years from now, the map, map of the Earth is not going to look like the map of the Earth that we have today. Because they're still discovering things. They have not discovered everything. Whatever we have satellite pictures of Earth and all those, at least we have something. <laughs> I mean, you cannot deny it. This is it is very true. We see it all the time, like daily life. <laughs> yeah. There's a fourth dimension, and there's a fifth dimension. Yeah, maybe that. Well, I mean, the fourth dimension definitely is not. 
this part of the world. The fourth dimension. The fourth, the fourth dimension is, is the material world is three dimensional. Right. Land, width, and breadth. Right. But the fourth dimension, those uh, and those three dimensions are limited. Correct. The fourth dimension, those those three dimensions become unlimited. Yeah, the fourth dimension. So, so dimension. therefore, therefore, uh, the physical Earth uh, is not exactly what what would be referred to in the fourth dimension. You, you could you could in the fourth dimension when Vamana stretches his foot to the outskirts of the whole universe, you see. So in the fourth dimension, it's much, much bigger than just the physical Earth. It's, and, and, and you get a hint of that when you hear Sugriva's description of where he's going to look for Sita. He, he, he explains the four directions, you know, north, south, east, west. But the way he describes it, it, it sounds as if he's going way beyond the earth. Anyway, th this requires research. I mean, we can't say that we know exactly what they're talking about here. So we can research it. Prabhupada gives the parts of the Mahabharata that we can look into. So you can, yeah, look, you can do that. Okay, Srila Prabhupada. Okay. Jai, Jai. Jai.